Nickelodeon is known for a plethora of different kinds of media for their channel, but when it came to producing original films for TV, they have a weird history with focusing on horror films. From turning the end of Keenan and Kel into a comedy horror film, to the one they like to pretend didn't exist for around a decade, Cry Baby Lane. Covered both of these examples a while back, so let's take a look at another offering from the network that kind of slipped under the radar to the point I thought it was some weird fever dream, where Tori from Victorious turns into a werewolf. But no, surprisingly, the Victoria Justice werewolf movie is real. And yeah, why not take a look at it? Tis the season after all, and hey, would you look at that? It's also the same day the movie originally premiered 13 years ago. It's almost like that was planned to happen this way. Now, this isn't a remake of the 1973 horror film of the same name, but it does involve a werewolf and a boy, so the title checks out. So let's take a bite out of this film to see if Nickelodeon produced a sleeper horror hit for Halloween or a lackluster attempt at just making something to pass the time on TV for the sake of the season. The film follows Jordan, played by Victoria Justice, along with her younger brother Hunter, played by Chase Ellison, and father, played by Matt Winston, who are moving from America to Wolfsburg, Romania, after inheriting a creepy castle from their mother's great uncle sometime not too long after their mom had passed away and the great uncle had passed away. Before the move, we see the family struggle to move forward from their loss, as Jordan ends up having to take care of the family as much as she can, dealing with her younger brother's constant annoying traits of pulling pranks and having their father struggle to pay the bills. Jordan is at first portrayed as this nerdy girl with allergies, and you can tell she's nerdy because of the glasses, you know, that's the giveaway right there, of course, but moving to Romania couldn't be all that bad, right? There wouldn't be a struggle to pay the bills, and you're going to live in another country. But upon arrival at this new castle, they encounter the housekeeper played by Brooke Shields. That is a little bit off in general, but the whole premise of the film is a bit off, as they decide to make this drastic move after just trusting this random letter dropped on their doorstep that magically has the answers to fix their solution. But for that solution, you just have to move to this fictional city. The Boy Who Cried part of the title is directed at the role of the younger brother, and the full title itself is obviously a play on the classic Boy Who Cried Wolf story, with Hunter here constantly playing tricks on others, so when things do become real, who's gonna believe him, right? And of course, being a horror film, we get some classic horror monster interpretations here, as there may just be a werewolf already lurking about in Wolfsburg. With the town preparing to hold a festival like they do every year to celebrate and honor the Beast of Wolfsburg. But maybe that beast is no longer around for reasons. But if you thought the only monster this film was going to deal with was just a werewolf, oh boy, you are mistaken. The film has vampires. So yeah, this seems like a great movie. Uproot your life to a random town that now places you in your own little slice of horror, but at least the bills are paid. So it seems like a fair deal. Ignore the constant howling of wolves in the distance every few minutes. We treat that just like the sound of crickets chirping. There's nothing to worry about. At the time of the film releasing in October of 2010, Victoria Justice was on the rise as one of Nick's go-to stars to put front and center after her side character role becoming a fan favorite for many on Zoe 101 and her previous Nickelodeon TV movie role in Spectacular, several small cameos in other popular Nick shows, and of course, Victorious, starting earlier in 2010, quickly growing an audience there. She always seemed like a surefire bet for the network, bringing her to her next role here with The Boy Who Cried Werewolf. For Jordan and Hunter, they end up exploring what Wolfsburg has to offer, learning about the beast and hear that the beast wasn't so bad, serving as this protector of the town and the castle they moved into. And speaking of the castle, the plan seemed to be not to stay there after all, but rather sell the property and use the money to no longer have any financial trouble. Which hey, that actually seems like a genuinely smart idea, but not so much to the housekeeper who tries to dissuade this decision from happening. This brings in a real estate agent named Paulina, played by Brooke Diorce, a character that the single father ends up sparking a little interest in as they start going on some dates, but there's something fishy about her. Could it be the fact that she makes jokes about being a vampire, or is only around at night? I don't know. But something isn't quite right here. After Jordan ends up meeting the town butcher named Goran, played by Stephen Graham, and has an interest in him as the movie goes along, the story starts to pick up, as at one point back at the castle, Jordan and Hunter are snooping around exploring what the place has to offer, and by that I mean somehow finding where the Wi-Fi's at. When Jordan comes across the great uncle's 
secret lab filled with many questionable things, like this vial of blood that Hunter scares her into dropping and breaking before they both try and leave quietly before getting caught in there. But when doing so, Jordan steps on a broken piece of glass from the vial with blood on it as things begin to start changing for her. While she does get the glass removed from her foot, she ends up feeling different, changing her vegetarian diet to now having a hunger for meat. And wouldn't you know it, her allergies are all cleared up. Oof, what I wouldn't give to know that feeling. Her interest in the butcher grows as even the brother points out that he is a butcher and she was a vegetarian. So there's that dynamic. She also gets hairy, like really hairy, where she notices a large rapid growth of hair on her legs to which waxing it off can't completely tame. And her eyes, well, they do this. So all signs are basically pointing to her, maybe just becoming a werewolf. Hunter's friends that he chats with over the computer help him realize a few things about his sister, like uh, maybe she might just be ready to eat a dude with her going on a date with the butcher and Hunter is now convinced that she is going to eat him. So he must go and stop that. But no one is stopping her from slaying now as the film does that thing where she goes from nerdy, low in confidence and here allergy ridden, girl in glasses who has little care about the type of clothes that she wears and now gets the glasses taken off, a new change of clothes and bam, the entrance reveal that she's been this hidden rock star full of confidence that you would have never guessed, but hey, it's 2010 and cliches are in. And on this date, she starts letting her animal instincts out, doing random gymnastics on the street as Hunter follows behind, still speaking with his friends over the phone to deduce what's happening. In doing so, he is stopped by a random old man who tells him that they don't have much time and that they, whoever that refers to, will come for him, before he leaves to the shadows as Hunter shakes this random encounter off to go and stop Jordan from luring her date away to eat him. But when he interrupts them, they were nearly just about to make out, as she threatens him that he's in big trouble for intruding in on her date, as she then parkours her way back home to the castle. And it's not to show off, it's just her animal instincts giving her a case of the zoomies. But as she returns home, she bare hand holds back the real estate vampire, I mean estate lady's car from running into her. When Hunter makes his way back home, he tries to confront Jordan that he is trying to help her with her condition. But when that doesn't work, she transforms fully into a werewolf, telling him to run as she now chases him through the halls of the castle. But when she corners him, she holds back on hurting him before jumping out of the window and escaping into the night. But that's okay. The next morning, she's back to normal, and they are eating some breakfast, so things are okay, maybe. As the father progresses in trying to sell the castle, tensions rise between him and the housekeeper, who essentially threatens or warns him of the darkness that will befall him if he goes through with selling the house. When we cut back to Jordan and Hunter discussing what happened, Jordan feels that she may end up hurting them, and despite Hunter saying that he is going to help her and won't let that happen, she goes all, hey, you don't know me anymore. I can do things now. As if this didn't all just begin happening over like a couple of days. It's honestly my favorite part because of the delivery of it. Hunter, you don't know me anymore. I can do things. You gotta respect the commitment to delivering that line seriously. She also is concerned that this now makes her a freak, and no guy would want to go to prom with a werewolf. At least her priorities are in order. Worried about her family first, prom date second. Hunter's friends try offering more solutions to help her, as they suggest to Hunter that the only way to stop her is a silver bullet shot right through her heart. Yeah, they just tell her to straight up kill his sister. Now, of course he isn't going to do that, but I'm glad they really thought out every solution here starting with murder. Luckily, they apparently have 24 hours to figure this all out before before she ends up getting stuck as a werewolf for good once the full moon goes away. So hopefully the result isn't just having to take her out back old Yeller style. But can you just imagine if they had the guts for the story to end that way? That honestly would shock me, but that would also make the movie a whole lot more interesting. <laughs> Dealing with the realization of staying as a werewolf forever, she has an emotional stroll through town, backed by a pop song to emphasize her emotions. I appreciate the commitment to cliches here. The housekeeper speaks with Hunter as she knows that Jordan is a werewolf now, as she confirms that their great uncle was the Wolfsburg Beast, and with him being a werewolf himself, notes that there is a cure that he invented to help reverse the effects, they just don't know where it is or how to make it. But thanks to Jordan having werewolf hidden tech sight abilities to find a clue hidden on their great uncle's gravestone. It ends up being the recipe to the cure, but as the night begins to fall, the kids end up getting a ride back to their castle from the vampire, I mean lady, as they try and hide her transformation in the car ride back, but the car suddenly dies, and uh oh, it was an ambush, as a pack of vampires swarm around them with Paulina commanding them, as she herself is the head vampire. I know, shocking, who could have seen that one coming? She also reveals her plans to take over the castle and that she is the one who took out their great uncle, but now it's time 
time for the werewolf to fight back as she fully transforms to fight off Paulina's vampire minions while Hunter escapes to go stop Paulina. And currently, she's at dinner and she's having a toast with the kid's father over her being the one who purchases the castle and the deal is made. Hunter makes a scene at the restaurant where it ruins the date a bit, but no one believes him when he calls her out for being a vampire, except for this dude. He's got Hunter's back. And yes, this is the cried wolf part since now his father won't believe him about the vampires and his sister being a werewolf until he pulls the whole, well, mom would have believed me card, which, ouch, you know that one stung a bit. And now with the father going along with trying to believe Hunter, they go after and try to rescue a now captured werewolf version of Jordan, who Paulina is planning on shooting with a silver bullet. And the other two get captured as well, and the family start getting all sappy towards one another. Well, Jordan is a werewolf, so here, acknowledgement of the sap is in the form of growling. But, you know, I feel what she's trying to say. As Paulina is now dressed in her Resident Evil attire, she aims her gun right at Jordan's werewolf head. But uh-oh, Hunter's rage now turns him into a werewolf as well, with him being a descendant of the direct bloodline, or whatever, and scares the vampires into fleeing for a moment. But he goes right after them for a fight in the cemetery, to which at one point Paulina gets tossed through some gravestones, and the best ADR I've ever heard happens. <laughs> Ah, incredible. As they overpower Hunter, Jordan comes to the rescue for him and sets him free as they both fight the vampires together. Brother and sister, werewolf and werewolf, murdering the vampires by throwing them out into the sunlight or through a mirror. But Jordan, now slowly turning back to her regular self, finishes off Paulina before she shoots Hunter, and as she then blows up, Jordan walks away in slow motion. Ah, the cliches are really cliching today, and that's fantastic. Before the 24 hours are up, the housekeeper has made the cure and administers it to the kids to save them from being stuck as werewolves forever. Then that mysterious guy from earlier comes back in and reveals to be working for the great uncle's estate, keeping an eye on them until everything in the story we just witnessed has wrapped up and go over every detail left to them, getting the castle saved and under their ownership still, and a large sum of money that saves them from their struggles back in the US. And Hunter can transform into his werewolf self now, as his destiny is to become the new protector of Wolfsburg without being stuck that way with the town celebrating him. Back in the US now, Jordan has found her own confidence in who she is, rejecting the popular kid from buying her lunch and being asked out to prom, revealing the butcher to have come to the States to be her date to the prom, and I guess boyfriend overall, but for the stinger of the movie, across the street from them a full body casted Paulina moves in to exact her revenge, even if we saw her blow up. In the end, we get every character we saw in the film performing karaoke to Britney Spears' Hit Me Baby one more time, since there was a small gag in the film about the great uncle inventing karaoke. It's a silly little movie movie that doesn't do much to stand out within the horror subgenre of werewolves versus vampires, so this underworld light here isn't a great film. It's not a classic that you'll be watching every year, and that's okay, because the cheap factor to the production and campy vibe at least gave me something to make me feel like I didn't waste my time getting something bad and boring. Instead, it's bad, but unintentionally humorous. I think it struggled to find the tone it was looking for, having moments in there that aim more towards a teen audience, but quickly falling back to something that that feels aimed at a very younger demographic. On the horror side of things, it isn't really scary, and the set designs don't lend themselves to feel as creepy as they were intended to be. But to be fair, on a small budget, the use of practical effects was a nice touch and didn't look awful. It didn't always look believable, but it wasn't awful, and the use of CGI can be a bit of a mixed bag at times, but I also don't feel like it was awful. So I will give credit to where credit is due. There are some silver linings, not enough use of silver bullets, but silver Silver linings for sure. So yeah, that's The Boy Who Cried Werewolf, another random horror film made on a low budget riding off the back of the star power that Victoria Justice was garnering on the network that ultimately is this hilarious, so bad it may just be good from your stomach hurting from laughter type of film. It's really just a harmless little slice of the spirit of the season that I can't personally recommend, but heck, maybe you might have a really good time with it. Who knows? Let me know if you did if you have seen this Nickelodeon TV movie before in the comments below. I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.